even better. Get it while it's getting good. Yeah, we've run out of bait. The the dome fits exactly into the combustion chamber just like that. Did you have any fitment problems? I mean, did you have to do some fabrication to get it to? No. Well, it's a 71 duster that I bought brand new on my 19th birthday. Slant 6 automatic. It always has been. It always will be. Almost that big moment. Fines.
cool. This is great. Is this yours? Yes. Mobile.
Oh man, look at that. He's got my name now. I need to get some business cards. Sam Space 81 here at the 2021 Chrysler Nationals. And this duster caught my eye. I'm gonna talk to this gentleman and see what we can learn about it. Uh, let's just take a look at it. And we've got a gnarly blown slant six in here. And uh, looking at this intake, the injection, I mean, he's got some serious things going on under the hood. And uh, I wanted to learn more about this car. And I talked to Steve for about a minute Mr. Steve Nitty, it's a pleasure, sir. How are you doing? I was admiring your duster. All right. And, uh, you know, I come from a tuner background in my earlier days and, you know, tuning on four banger stuff, set my dad at his vet shop. And, yeah. you know, I'm a muscle car guy and, and you've got a unique ride here. It looks like you, you've got some serious power going with that six. What? Well, it's a 71 duster that I bought brand new on my 19th birthday. Slant six automatic. It always has been, it always will be. I took the car to a shop and they allowed me to work on it while they worked on it, shared on performance. And uh, basically we took the Slant 6 and brought it from uh, 145 horse stock and 210 foot pounds of torque to sit a little over 600 horse and over 550 foot pounds of torque. It does the quarter mile at 1056 at 122 miles an hour. Good lord. Yeah. It, are you, it, it, it likes it. <laughs> are you running uh, rice fuel in it or? E85. Oh, corn. Yeah. Pump gas. Well, Steve, I appreciate it, man. That That's really a, a machine. What, what made you want to keep it a six cylinder all these years? Well, I knew what I wanted to do under the hood. And nobody's, nobody's ever done this, so gone this far, right? So I knew I would have something unique, and I was hoping to maybe get a little shot in a magazine. It turns out the thing is so impressive that it's been featured in 13 different Mopar publications. It was a full article there. Wow. Slant sick. Yep. And it's before the stripes went on. And then way in the back here is this. It's in Las Vegas. I see daylight. And the uh, front wheels are off the ground. Probably a regular occurrence <laughs> it nowadays. Is. It is, and talk about a weird feeling. It's something I've never done. I've never pulled a wheelie in anything. Is it just get loose in the front end? You just... You're like... <laughs>
Side and check out the steering wheel. So cool, isn't it? This car is amazing. Isn't it nice? <laughs> Beyond nice.
Oh, it looks good in there too. Imperial or something. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got a winner there, doesn't he? Nice trailer too. graduated college yep well i was and i was second lieutenant in the 82nd airborne by then appreciate your service thank you uh window sticker wow forty eight hundred dollars forty forty nine well it was uh 41 the price of it uh, yeah the window expensive it's forty nine hundred the window or the uh, i paid forty one seventy three ninety one build sheet did you negotiate it down? Didn't have to. Yeah. Geico, my dad worked at the Pentagon, and Geico had a buying service. Geico was Government Employees Insurance Company. Yes, sir. And they insured uh, the, the enlisted ranks of the, uh, the military and government employees. And they had a buying service at $50 over factory invoice if you buy any car. Well, yeah. that's cool. Regional registration, regional warranty. Now these, you had a five-year, fifty thousand mile warranty. Five-year, fifty thousand. That was a heck of a warranty. Yeah, I mean, that was the first really extended warranty, just the Chrysler. But if you had a six-pack or a Hemi, it was ten months. It was a twelve thousand or twelve months for ten thousand miles, and you couldn't get air conditioning. Did you? Uh, how many miles did you have you put on it? Sixty. Just over 65 now. Did you have to have any warranty work done? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that's a classic tale. You know, every, every one of these cars has a story or a bunch of stories. And this one definitely had a story, the warranty work. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't running right from the factory. And it, um, it would... Um, you know, after I had put about a thousand miles on it, twelve hundred miles on it, breaking it in real gentle the way they said to, I took it out and started dogging it. And it would, it would, it would come in about in fourth gear. It would come in about fifteen hundred RPM. It was, it, it, it was stronger in hell. It would wind to forty seven hundred, and then it would just go. What are the gears under it? Fourteen. Oh, low it's a, gear. It's an a, It's a. It's a it's an 834 Super Track Pack car. That means oh. the Dana 60 and the 410 rear. End. Didn't know that. And uh, and and then it would get down to about 2300, and it would catch it. The 4700 fall on its face. Fall on its face. And so I went down. Of course, I went down and and oh yeah, we can. We test drove it. And we adjusted this and we adjusted that, and then we put plugs in it, and they dicked around for 12 weeks. Yeah. And. It was six visits. It took them twelve weeks. The car was the car was in the shop six out of the first twelve weeks I owned it, and they kept dicking me around. And finally, the guy at the shop, the stumpy service manager, said, well, "You know, Lieutenant Rodriguez, you're supposed to. You got these cars like this. You have to drive them gentle." For about ten thousand miles before you really you know, break them in right now. Ten thousand miles. How convenient is that? That's when the warranty runs out. Hmm. Are you accusing me of something? Yep. So we started. We started to go at it, and the mechanic. The, the mechanics knew me by this time. Yeah. And the, the mechanic grabbed each of us because he was getting ready to swing at me, and I was getting ready to kick the shit out of him. And. Uh, so I went home, I was pissed. I went home and I called, and this is a true story. We, we had the family, we knew a little bit of people up in Dodge years ago, so I yeah. kind of knew their structure. And, uh, and I called up the senior vice president of the Dodge division in Detroit that afternoon. And I called and his secretary, or his secretary, oh, he's in a meeting, blah, blah, blah. 
You'll have to call back. I called about five or six times. And she said, he's busy. You're just not going to be able to talk to him. I said, look, I'm going to make your life miserable because I'm going to keep calling back and you're going to be talking to me until I talk to him. And she said, he, he really is in the meeting, but they're, going to take, they're getting ready to take a break. Let me go talk to him. And I don't know if she did or if she just finally went back to his office and talked to him. Because I'd already told her the whole story, the six visits, what it was doing. They claimed they'd test driven the car. I was pretty sure they had. And uh, and so she said, you know, that's he. She came back to phone. She said, he said that that's a problem for sure. We need to take care of. And he can talk to you in a couple of minutes. But he said to save you time, because he can't do anything directly. To the deal, she said he's gonna call somebody and give them this information that that knows are the people who have to do it. And the guy he called, he said was gonna call me was the general service manager for Dodge Division. And so he said, wait five minutes to get a call. So I get a call. It's from the administrative assistant of this guy. I want to talk to him. I want to tell him this story. He can't. He can't come. He's in a meeting. They're always in meetings. Uh huh. Just and, just pulling, well, dragging it along. But at at some point, I said, "Well, look, I'm going to keep calling back." Okay. You are. So they're going to have to deal with you. You're going to have to deal with it. He's going to have to deal. You with ain't going to go away. <laughs> and she said, "Look, let me go." So she went and talked. She came back. She said, "I talked to him. I gave him the story. He said we will take care of it because he had orders." From the cop. But. The guy that will actually take care of it is the service manager, the, uh, the, the general service manager of the Southeastern District in Atlanta. And his name is such and such, and he will call you. Not his admin assistant, he will call you. Five minutes later, this guy called me. I told him the story. He said, tell me in detail, and I told him everything. And the, the service manager, what was about to start the fight was, he looked at me when I said 10, you know, 10,000. Yeah, he was kind of a punk. Me. He said, "You get this car out of my shop, and don't you ever bring it." Yeah, back. you went over his over his head. Oh, over, oh yeah, got him in trouble. Oh yeah, and and when I said that to the southeastern service manager, he he said, "What did he say?" And I repeated it. He said, "We we we can take care of this. Wait a couple of minutes. You're going to get a call back from the dealer." I'm going to remind him that we pulled, there was, a, there was a, an outfit that ran a NASCAR, a pretty winning NASCAR called O.B. Hewlett. It was the O.B. Hewlett one best deal, and they were they, they were sucking on, on uh, service, customer service. They pulled the dealership. Wow. They pulled their dealership and didn't buy the cars back. They made them get rid of the cars. It was a big deal. So anyway, five minutes, or three minutes later, it wasn't even five minutes, I get a call from this service manager. And he was, oh, Lieutenant Rodriguez, I'm so sorry. We've had a miscommunication, and I, 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 we're off on the wrong foot. How soon can you have your car down here? And it was eight miles to the dealership. And I said, well, I can bring it right down now, but I'm going to need a ride back to the house. Oh, no problem. We'll take care of you. And, it, and, and I have to tell you, it's our first service priority for this whole dealership. That's the number one of all the resources. Take care of their people. Yeah. Well, and he and and so I went down there. I took it down there, and I said, "Have you driven this car?" And he said, "No, I had." I said, "You told me you didn't." He said, "Well, I didn't have time." So, so he'd already lied. I said, "Oh yeah," five or six times. I said, "You and me are going to get in this car right now, and I'm going to show you what it's doing." And I took him out, and, and it did it, and. And his eyes got big. He said, I've never seen one do that before. I said, me neither, but it needs to be fixed. He said, yes, sir. He said, we're going to get right on it. We'll call you every day with a progress report. And five or six days, and, and they, every day they said, it's doing it, and we can't figure it out. They just kept calling you? <laughs> yeah, every day. And they, then they called me one day, and they said, look, we can't figure this thing out. We have two engineers from Detroit that they flew down here. And they can't figure it out. He said, "Wow." He said, "We need to put this car on a chassis dyno." And there's one in town, Lee J Dynamotive in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And and I knew them because they had done a little bit of work for me on the car on something else. And uh, they said, "Would you mind if we send it down there and and did a chassis, you know, chassis, uh, chassis dyno test 
and see what's wrong. So I said, sure. So two days later, I get a call back, and they say, you ain't going to believe this. We've never seen this before. The cam was retarded one tooth. The cam, the gear. The cam gear was was one. When they built the motor. When they built the motor, Monday or Friday, I guess. <laughs> Somebody was. And 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 they they didn't get it degree. They didn't get the cam degreed in right. They got they they missed it by one. So it one, it run good initially, and then it would start to try to advance the timing. No, well the timing. I mean the the, the cam timing was just fixed one. It would one always two, one tooth forward, and that was the result. I'll be and down. they went ahead and corrected, and we went out and test drove it that afternoon and on Fort Bragg Boulevard, and it was just screaming, <laughs> like like you thought you'd bought, like I thought I'd bought, and so we all <laughs> shook hands and laughed and went. But did I have any 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 uh, warranty work done? That was warranty. Work. That's a story there. And, well, there's another story that goes with that. When I bought the car, it's got a sure you know it's got a sure grip. It's got a Dana 60 with sure grip, limited slip differential. The day I bought it, I picked it up at Kirby Dodge. It's 26 December. And in 70, 90 or 69. Oh, I I I had they called me on the 24th, said your car's here. I, I, when it was Christmas, I said, well, I was going to go get it, but I'd already agreed. One of the married officers had the duty officer for the battalion. That you stay in there overnight and you handle anything that comes up. And I had agreed to, I had agreed to um, take his, to swap him duty so he could spend it with his family because I wasn't married. It's nice, yeah. And uh, well, that's kind of a custom in the Army. Sure. And so I, I did my duty officer, and then I went home and got a couple hours sleep. And there was a gal that I, I had lived in Fayetteville, uh, went to high school there, and graduated from high school there, and lived there when I was at Clemson. And so I had friends there. There was a girl I had dated. We were just good friends. Mm -hmm. And her dad was buried in Arlington. And I said, you want to you go with me up to Arlington? And uh, and uh, she said, yeah, I'd like to visit my dad's grave. So we drove up 95, and there had been snow a couple of days before that. We went to the dealership with my parents and drove my car to uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland, is where they live, and uh, dropped the car off. My dad took us down there, and uh, I signed for the car and, and got everything. Well, we went straight over to Arlington Cemetery. And it had, like I said, it had snowed a couple of days before, a couple, three, four inches. And and so we get in there, and there's still a little snow on the ground in the shady patch, a little mud there. And, and so her dad's grave was over there. So we pulled off the road, and she said, oh, don't do that. You, you get stuck. You get stuck. I went, I got a limited slip differential. Yeah, yeah. Get in the car. <laughs> so I rocked it out, got it. And so now I had something else to contend with. But I had that, this other thing overshadowed that. And, and yeah. I, we were, you know, we were on a wartime footing then, and we were in the field six months out of the year, because while everything else was going to Vietnam, 82nd Airborne Division was sitting there ready to go anywhere else in the world, and almost did a couple of times. And, and so I didn't have time to mess with it, and I never did anything with it until we brought the car back up. I, I brought the car back up in 2016. I put it under a cover, car cover in a garage in uh, 1979 and made sure nothing hurt it and then we brought it back up in 2016. And I said, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna find out what's going on and fix that. So while we had the motor out and it was up at Hensley getting, getting redone and uh, and I had a friend of mine who guided me through. I went, we went, and I pulled the rear cover off. And the first thing that was suspicious was uh, the oil that came out of the rear end smelled brand new and wonderful. Okay, now you had limited slip differential. Oh yeah. You ever change the oil in it? Nasty, stinking, high point grease. Well, it, it's, it's the reason it's nasty stinking. It's normal gear lube. But there's a little supplement a supplement package you put in. Oh yeah, yeah, the the for the clutch pack or the the posi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure yeah. grip. Yeah, and, and friction modifier. And, and this and this smelled wonderful. Oh, another they forgot Monday, to put the friction another modifier. Another Friday, and it was the the, the clutch packs were uh, 
were blue. Oh hey. They, they, they were high speed, they've been slipping in high in high temperature. So I called a couple of people that do rear ends and they said, nah, it shouldn't be a problem, but you really want to take and bead blast all the blue. So I put it in the bead blast cabinet. And Give it a good grip again. Gave, the gave it, it, it nice and shiny and pretty. Put it back together. It'll leave two rolls of or two two rows of rubber. So you bought a super track pack sure. car. Yep. running on a peg leg falling on its face at 4,000 rpm i bet that was yep. but you got it right <laughs> yep, yep. but it, the funny thing is how long it took to get it right we're up to 2016. yeah we're at 2016 when that happened oh, man and uh, let's see what else now you got a four speed mine was yes it had a, had a, had a the pistol, pistol grip. grip did your hand contact the dashboard when you powered yeah it would hit up you? there I never got to power shifted. It barely ran, old gas, put it up to the corner twice in it, ran it into the wall of my dad's barn because I couldn't drive a stick. So I didn't get to enjoy it. Broke the, broke the finger on the dash. Those are A990 Dodge van seats. Notice we've got no rear roll down windows. Those are Lexan. Uh, this is an A990 car. The front fender should be acid dipped, lighter than original. Second A990 that I've worked with. Very interesting. Very expensive, check out the price. That was expensive back then, $4,600. So it made 12 and a half to yep. one mm -hmm. and your you know your intake valve and your exhaust valve piston or the the spark plug would be dead center mm -hmm. and then the the dome fits exactly into the combustion chamber just like that to fill the combustion chamber okay and um, of course the hemi rod wrist pins and then the this is a representative this was from a factory uh, race team the top ring is a dykes ring as they call it and it, it's an l shape if you see it looking at it from the side yeah you see how I it's do. an l shape mm -hmm. it's to reduce mass but to have a high surface area at the against the piston wall but less surface area of the ring itself. So it still seals up, but yep. you're, you're running just every little bit of but what rotating. It, with the with the L shape, it allows the compression gases to get in here and push against the ring to seal it. Okay. That's what the whole purpose of the Dykes ring. They let the gases get in here, and they're gonna push this way to seal the ring. So a Dykes ring is a, a better sealing ring. Good for high compression engines. Yep, that's what they wanted. I learned something.
get any cooler, man. <laughs> Don't get any cooler. idea yeah I got my feel I got everything in the building or that one with the paint and yeah. the the barn finds yeah, look it must be where it was sold Plate. 
Oh, good, he's parking. See, it says last V8, the interceptor. I gave up the pretzel braid for a cheeseburger. Oh. Yeah, I was expecting a pretzel. I was thinking about it. Well, Greg, are you getting butterflies, man? It's almost that big moment. Nah, no butterflies. <laughs> a Not born yet. winner. You're a born winner, buddy. A couple more cars, I will. <laughs> First place in the 2015 Dodge Challenger RT stock category with a 2015 Dodge Challenger, Craig Seibel. Another buddy. Well, Mr. Greg, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for another fine weekend. Hey, thank you very much for uh, coming on over and hope your viewing audience enjoys it. I enjoyed it. We always do, man. We enjoy each other's company and everybody else. We have a good time. I think that everybody that watches kind of gets the same vibes from the input I'm getting on it. I agree. Appreciate, appreciate, I appreciate everyone watching Sam Space 81. Thanks, y'all. Harrisburg. Looks like we got the Chrysler Nationals going on at the local hotel.